Good evening. Welcome to the house of the Lord, to St. Philip Lutheran Church here in Raleigh, North Carolina, for our service of worship and praise this Thursday evening. This is Maundy Thursday. The word Maundy is an old English word that comes from the Latin word mandatum, from which we get our English word mandate or commandment. So you can think of it as mandate or commandment Thursday, the reason being that Jesus gave us a new commandment on this night, namely to love one another as He had loved us. Uh, this evening marks the final night of His life here on earth thousands of years ago. Uh, on this evening, according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospels, Jesus shared a last supper with His disciples, which was shortly deemed the Lord's Supper and then Holy Communion. Uh, that was instituted because He said, Do this in remembrance of Me. Uh, he did that on this particular night. In John's Gospel, uh, He also washed the feet of His disciples on this night thereby leaving us also an example of humility, love, and service to follow. This is a solemn night and a sad night. Uh, this evening will end uh, with Jesus being abandoned by all of His disciples. He will end up alone and in prison for the evening as He will shortly go on trial, be found guilty, and be crucified the following day. Uh, we remember and we recall all that He did for us uh, on this night and the following day as I said 2,000 years ago. Grace for us is free, but the price for Jesus was very high and steep indeed. At the conclusion of this service, we will strip the altar and the chancel area, uh, symbolizing the stripping of Jesus Christ of His clothes before He was crucified. Um, psalm 22 will be read as we do that, because the first line of that psalm is what Jesus cried out from the cross, uh, when He was crucified. Uh, the, the service itself will end in silence. We ask it all depart the sanctuary in silence. Uh, if you are with us online, we, it will be a period at the end of service for prayer and silent reflection. Um, we will remain online until all have left the virtual connection. So again, we welcome you uh, to this most holy, mysterious of evenings. We gather to worship in the name of the God who loves us, in the name of the Son who gives us new life, and in the name of the Spirit who brings wholeness and healing. Let us Let worship God, God the Father, Father Son, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. May, May our love for one, one another be a reflection of the true love of God in Jesus Christ. Christ. Our gathering hymn is love divine, all loves excelling.
friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the communion of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. We sing together, What Feast of Love. Let us pray. Holy God, source, source of, of all love, love. on the night, night of his betrayal, betrayal Jesus, Jesus gave us a new, new commandment, commandment to love one another as he loves us. 
write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now for the reading of God's holy word. From the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of the months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly con congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb the same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. Well, I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as perpetual ordinance. The word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle reading is, comes from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. 
Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Verse 31b, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, And God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. We seek to abide with you this holy evening, Lord. We thank you for the scriptures which have been recorded for our sake so that we may know and remember, that we may grieve and lament and mourn. We praise you for who you are and we thank you for all that you have done for us, all that you have accomplished on our behalf. We are well aware that your grace is amazing and it is free. We are also mindful of the fact that for you the price was very high, very dear indeed. Thank you for your faithfulness to your mission. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for your example. Thank you for your commandments. Grant us strength and courage to always follow you, especially when that becomes challenging and difficult. As always, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, for your forgiveness of all of our sins. We love you very, very much. We thank you for first loving us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. My sermon text for this evening is indeed the gospel lesson, John chapter 13, 
verses 1 through 17, and then skipping down to verses 31 through 35. My sermon title for this evening is, What Do You Know About Yourself? What do you know about yourself? We have before us this evening the fourth gospel written by the beloved disciple or the disciple whom Jesus loved, namely John, the brother of James, a fisherman by trade, who is writing this account towards the end of the first century, perhaps A.D. 90. Believed to be the only original disciple not to die a martyr's death for his faith, John is likely writing from Ephesus and emphasizes the divine nature and origin of this Jesus, the Christ. While the other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are very similar, John is unique and shares very little in common with them. His Gospel is organized around the number seven. Jesus performs seven signs or miracles and utters seven great I am statements. Furthermore, the Gospel is divided into two sections, chapters 1 through 12, the so-called book of signs, or again, miracles, and chapters 13 through 21, the book of glory paradoxically, which is the account of Jesus' suffering and death, and then, of course, resurrection. Hence, tonight, we stand on the threshold of Jesus' passion, His last night of life here on earth, in that original Maundy Thursday evening. The other three Gospels use this occasion to have Jesus transform His last supper into the sacrament of Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, and they mention nothing of foot washing. John does the opposite. He mentions nothing of such a meal and relays rather an account of foot washing that would not exist at all were it not for his record. The reason we think Jesus' ministry lasted three years, by the way, is also solely because of John. John records Jesus' actions on three separate annual Passover feasts. The first in chapter 2 where Jesus cleanses the temple the second in chapter 6 where Jesus feeds the multitudes, and here in chapter 13 where Jesus gives an example of humble love and service. Therefore, we can rightly think of every worship service as Christians as an opportunity to cleanse our souls from sin, to be fed with Holy Communion, and to be sent forth to serve and love the world. It's an intriguing paradigm of cleansing, feeding, and serving that we ought not miss. We are perhaps overly familiar with the concept of love as it appears in the Scriptures, and yet it remains eternally elusive for us to actually and truly put into practice. We know that Jesus said the two greatest commands were to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. We know that He taught in His Sermon on the Mount that we are to love even our enemies. We know that Paul wrote in Romans that love fulfills the law. And in 1 Corinthians, that the greatest of these is love. We know that love is the first fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, and that God Himself is defined as love in 1 John. Love could not be more central or more emphasized in the Bible. And yet here in John chapter 13, Jesus can speak of it as a new commandment even when it is as old as Deuteronomy and Leviticus written hundreds of years earlier. One thing that makes it new and different this time is the phrase in verse 34, just as I have loved you. We are not only to love, in other words, but love as Jesus loves us. Hmm. How does He love us? Verse number 1, Having loved His own who were in the world, He loved them to the end. So we are to love others to the end, all life long, never stopping, never giving up. As a result of His love, He washed His disciples' feet, an act of humility, love, and service, an act of hospitality normally performed by a slave or a servant. It doesn't appear to be optional in the text. Verse 14, So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. 
The reason there are two sacraments in the Protestant Christian church, baptism and communion, is because they are two direct commands of Jesus. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, as He says in Matthew, and do this in remembrance of Me, as He says about communion in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I don't know why there's not a third, foot washing, because verses 14 through 17 herein are pretty close to a direct command to do this. What if we came in here every week and washed each other's feet? What if our spiritual assignment was to wash the feet of the person whom we most detested and despised? The person with whom we are most impatient, most frustrated and vexed by? What would happen if you washed their feet and they washed yours? What would it do to your heart? To your spirit. Skipping ahead two chapters, Jesus says, No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. If we are called to love others the way Jesus loves us, then our love should be to the end, never failing, should issue forth in humbly lowering ourselves and serving others, even by washing their feet, and should involve laying down our very lives. The other thing that makes this love commandment new is that it is directed solely to this community of disciples, this small church. The other commands to love in Scripture are general, diffuse, vague even. Love everybody. Love your neighbor, whoever that is. Love the stranger whom you don't know. But here Jesus is directly addressing this intimate gathering of the twelve. By you ought to wash one another's feet, he means each other gathered in that very room. Look how how often the phrase one another, quote unquote, occurs in verses 34 and 35. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Y'all. The twelve of y'all, Jesus is saying. This is not a drama-free group, my friends. You have fishermen, tax collectors, and zealots, members of an insurgency group. You have conflicts of pride and jealousy. Two of them are even nicknamed by Jesus the sons of thunder and antagonize the others with their arrogance to be the greatest. My friends, it is oftentimes easier to love total strangers than it is to love those most intimate with you. What would happen if Cain hadn't murdered Abel? If Jacob hadn't stolen Esau's birthright? If Joseph wasn't sold into slavery by his brothers? If Amnon hadn't raped his sister Tamar and then been murdered himself by his brother Absalom? What if Euodia and Syntyche hadn't been at each other's throat? If Martha hadn't snapped at Mary? If Paul and Barnabas hadn't split up over John Mark? But instead they'd all washed each other's feet. They had all loved each other until the end and gave their very lives for one another. By this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for each other. One commentator notes here, schisms, disreputes, disputes, unkind criticisms, and defamation of character are contrary to the Spirit of Christ. His love was sacrificial. It was unconditional. It is constant. And they'll know we are Christians... By our, by our, and they'll know we are Christians by our. Verse 17 in the Good News translation reads, Now that you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. There is an innocence overlooked description in the text that I believe is beneficial and empowering. Verse 3 starts with Jesus. Verse 4 states what he does. Got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, etc., etc., and began washing his disciples' feet. 
But in between the subject Jesus and the verbs of what he does, there is a dependent clause which describes his state. Knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. Jesus, knowing these things, knowing these three things, could do what he did. The reason he was able to love and humble himself and perform lowly service is because he knew, number one, that the Father had put everything into his hands. Number two, that he had come from God. And number three, that he was going to God. Do you know why you can do what you do, my friends? Do you know why you can love your neighbor and love your enemy? Do you know why you can humble yourself and take the position of a servant and serve others? Because God the Father has placed all things into your hands. You have come from God and you are going to God. In Scripture, Jesus has given you, and these are all quotes, authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. You shall sit on thrones one day, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, judging the world, and even judging angels. You have come from God, and you are going to God. You were created in His own image and likeness originally, and now redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You are headed to heaven one day. Because no one can change that, touch that, or alter that. You are now free to love. You are free to forgive. You are free to serve. You are free to smile. You are free not to hold grudges. You are free to think of others more highly than you think of yourself. You are free to have the same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus Himself. You are free to stoop down and wash the feet of someone you don't necessarily like and actually who may one day betray you. And in that freedom... They will be changed, and you will be changed, and the world will be changed. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because you know that you have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer you who live, it is Christ who lives in you. We love and serve because He loved and served us. To God be the glory. Great things He hath done. What do you know about yourself? You know that number one, God has placed the necessary power into your hands. Number two, you know that you have come from God. And number three, you know that you are going to God. That's what we know about ourselves as disciples of Jesus. Amen. Let us sing together now our hymn of the day, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Oh 
my rod and staff, my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thou spreadst a table in my sight, thy unction grace be so well, and oh, what transport of delight from thy pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days, thy goodness filleth ever. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. United by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith. From one generation to the next, give your church hunger for the promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in places of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God. Your, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of, all, of that love to all who need it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Your glory shone in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. During Jesus' life and ministry, he consistently fed the hungry. He provided food for people to eat so their bodies could be healthy. He provided food for their faith so they could believe. We now celebrate the meal he left for us so we could be fed, made whole and healthy, grow in faith, and experience God's grace. The Lord be with you. 
and, and all truth. truth. Be open to the presence of God's grace. We are, we are open and, and expect God's, God's grace with us. us. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is good, good and right to give God, God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty Lord, that you are God of all people, that you are not ashamed to be called our God, that you know us by name and care for the world daily. You created us and choose us to be your own people. You have given us all that we need to live and come into our lives with your love. You have shown us how much you care for us over and over again through leaders, prophets, family, and in your only Son, Jesus Christ. For all this, we praise you and offer our humble admiration. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of all life, the earth and the heavens are filled with your glory. We bless your name. To nurture us as God's chosen people, at the end of Jesus' life and ministry, the night he was betrayed and arrested, he sat with his disciples and shared a meal with them, and through that meal gave all humanity a gift that feeds us, body and spirit, renews our faith, and makes us right with God. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Then after they had eaten, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. It is poured out for you and all people. Do this to remember me. We now remember that meal and do as your son commanded, remembering his death and resurrection, giving thanks that you made us worthy to serve you as your people. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we now pray together as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His loving care. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift that heals and restores us to life in your love. And we pray that you will use this gift in us, that we may grow in strength and power to live in faith, loving you and one another. Amen. Amen. We invite you to drive through communion here at St. Philip in our parking lot from 8.30 to 9 p.m. this evening. Please remain masked and in your cars. We look forward to seeing you shortly. And now, as was announced at the beginning of service, we will have the stripping of our altar and chancel area to symbolize the stripping, the betrayal, the denial, the abandonment of Jesus Christ on this last night of his life here on earth. Psalm 22 will be read in its entirety because verse number 1 of that psalm is what Jesus exclaimed from the cross of crucifixion the following day. There will be no benediction. We ask all leave the church in silence. Please stay online as long as you would like for a time of prayer and reflection. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night for our Good Friday worship service, the same Zoom link at 7 p.m.
Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And you, our ancestors, trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. 